Hi guys, in this video we will study about the ear, mainly the external and middle ear. As you know, the ear is a very important organ for hearing as well as it also helps in the equilibrium of the body, the erect posture of the body. So uh, to begin with, the ear is divided into three parts, the external ear, the middle ear as well as the internal ear. In this lecture, we will study about the external and middle ear and the internal ear itself is a separate lecture. So we will study it separately. So here you can see here this is called as the, the auricle or the pinna as well as the this is the external acoustic meatus. This together form the external ear. Then we have the middle ear here and this is the internal ear. First, we will begin with the external ear. So, the external ear is a very important structure for the collection as well as the conduction of the sound waves. The structure of the ear, external ear itself, uh, is very feasible for the conduction as well as the collection of the, the sound waves which are traveling in the air. Okay, and they will be transmitted to the tympanic membrane. Here is the tympanic membrane, this is the tympanic membrane and this whole thing here from here to here, this whole thing is the external ear and so the air will be collected whichever uh, waves hit the ear to the auricle or the pinna and they are transmitted through this tube to the, the tympanic membrane. And uh, <clears throat> the audible frequency as you know it will be 20 to 20,000 uh, decibel units so those waves which we can hear will be transmitted through the, uh, the external ear. Uh, uh, talking about the development in brief uh, the external ear developed from the, uh, the ectodermal first brachial cleft if you remember the pharyngeal arches here are the pharyngeal pouches, the first, second, third, fourth and the sixth and between the pouches there will be the clefts. This is between the first and second pharyngeal pouch will be the pharyngeal cleft. So this first pharyngeal uh, cleft will or the brachial cleft will be giving rise to the, the, uh, the external ear. Okay. Uh, the pinna of the external ear is mostly a mammalian feature. It is uh, more commonly seen in the uh, mammalian uh, 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 animals. The external ear consists of the auricle, as I said, auricle as well as the external acoustic meatus. So this is the, the auricle or it is also called as the pinna and it has some uh, uh, features here. Here this is the the external acoustic piatus deep inside which is a tube okay so just around the tube we can see this part is called as the tragus and just opposite to that there is an elevation similar to that of the tragus that is called as the anti tragus okay and below this you can see a soft uh, uh, tissue uh, with the fat content and covered by the skin this is called as the lobule and if you go above, this is uh, made up of the, uh, the elastic tissue and uh, here you can see here, this is called as the, uh, this is the helix and this is called as the anti-helix. This is the helix and this is called as the anti-helix and in between there is a small space here, this is called as the scaphoid fossa and on the helix there is a small elevation, this is called as the Darwin's tubercle. And if you come in the front, this is called as the triangular fossa. And here there is a conca called as the kumba conca. And this is the conca here. This is the kumba conca. So these are some of the important features of the external ear. We will not go into details about this. So this is called as the, the, uh, the auricle or the pinna. Then deep inside we have the external acoustic meatus that is a tube like structure. So if you uh, have seen the auricle or the pinna it is trumpet like 
and uh, it will be collecting the uh, sound vibrations or the sound waves it is covered by skin as you know and inside you can see the elastic cartilage yellow elastic cartilage so that's why it will be flexible whenever it twist and turn it will come back to the coils back to its normal position and shape however this elastic cartilage is absent in the lower part that is the the lobule you have seen the lobule so this is called as the lobule here there is no elastic cartilage uh, but it is filled with a lot of fat okay fibro fatty tissue so that's why it will become soft uh, uh, in nature and this whole thing uh, auricle uh, is covered by the the skin okay uh, there are some muscles of the uh, in the auricle itself but they are vestigial in case of human beings uh, but uh, in case of lower animals uh, they are functional and they help in the twisting and turning of the uh, uh, external ear or the auricle depending on the from where the sounds are coming if you see observe some of the lower animals uh, they can twist and turn their uh, auricle okay because of this muscles but in case of human beings they are vestigial so the muscles are divided into two types extrinsic as well as the intrinsic extrinsic are those muscles which are outside the the auricle itself but they twist and turn the auricle and there are some muscles which are within this auricle okay the extrinsic muscles will be the auricularis anterior superior as well as the posterior if you see if you have studied the muscles uh, of the face as well as the head and neck there you can see the auricularis <coughs> anterior superior as well as the posterior the nerve supply of the auricularis anterior and superior is by the temporal branch of the facial nerve so this is a temporal branch of the facial nerve and the uh, the uh, the nerve supply of the uh, auricularis posterior will be by the posterior auricular branch of the facial nerve so this is the nerve supply of these three muscles and the action it moves the auricle in case of lower animals but in case of the human beings as i said uh, even if it is present if you imagine that the, it is present then it will be insignificant okay coming to the intrinsic muscles the intrinsic muscles will be helices major as well as the minor then we have the tragicus then we have the antitragicus then transversus auriculae then as well as the the last one called as the obliquus auriculae the action of these muscles again they uh, modify the shape of the auricle okay but still again it is insignificant in case of the human beings and the nerve supply is by the facial nerve coming to the blood supply of this pinna or the auricle uh the it is supplied by the posterior auricular as well as the superficial temporal arteries the superficial temporal arteries and its branches as well as the uh, the posterior auricular artery the lymphatic drainage is into the pre auricular as well as the post auricular group of lymph nodes pre auricular there are few group of lymph nodes here uh, in front of the uh, the uh, pinna that will be called as uh, the pre auricular then there are few group of lymph nodes behind the ear those are called as uh, the post auricular group of lymph nodes and and these uh, pre auricular and post auricular finally drain into the superficial cervical group of lymph nodes the development coming to the development of the auricle itself the auricle develops from fusion of six mesodermal hillox or tubercles around the external opening of the first uh, brachial or the uh, pharyngeal cleft as i showed you the first brachial cleft between the two pouches so there there will be small hillox or developed mesoderma hillox or tubercles and they all join together to form the external uh, uh, or the the pin or the auricle okay uh, this will be dealt in detail when we talk about the development of the ear itself coming to the nerve supply nerve supply is by the auriculotemporal branch of the mandibular nerve so this yellowish region will be supplied by the auriculotemporal branch of the mandibular nerve then the posterior part of the pinna will be supplied by the lesser occipital nerve and the lowermost part will be supplied by the 
the greater auricular nerve. So these three nerves will be supplying the uh, the pinna, auriculotemporal branch of the mandibular nerve, the lesser occipital nerve as well as the greater auricular nerve. Now going to the external acoustic meatus that is the tunnel, the outer tube which is present. It extends from the bottom of the concha. So you have seen the concha will be here. So this is the concha and from the bottom of the concha will be the beginning of the external acoustic meatus and it runs up to the tympanic membrane. Okay, and the length, total length of this uh, tube external acoustic meatus will be almost 2.4 centimeters or 24 millimeters. It is not straight as you have seen in the pictures, uh, but it is uh, slightly curved. Okay, even though here it has been shown as though it is a straight tube for the simplification of understanding, they have shown it as a, a straight tube, but it is not as straight as shown here. It is it is a shape. Okay, uh, so uh, and it has three parts the pass externa, pass intermedia as well as the pass interna. Pass externa will be directed upwards, forwards as well as medially. Pass intermedia, so it is divided into uh, external one third, middle one third and uh, the inner one third. So the middle of one third that is the pass intermedia will be directed upwards, backwards and medially and pass interna will be directed downwards, forwards and medially. This can be appreciated when you put uh, a torch to examine the uh, the uh, the tympanic membrane itself, uh, you cannot see directly into the tympanic membrane because, as you know, as I said, it is a shaped curve. Okay, so to for visualization of this uh, the uh, the tympanic membrane to see the tympanic membrane, so what should you do when you cannot see it directly by putting the torch? But then you have to pull the the uh, the ear upwards backwards as well as laterally ear means the pinna if you pull the pinna upwards backwards as well as laterally to make the tube straight okay the external caustic meter straight then you can see into the uh, the um, the tympanic membrane so this uh, clearly indicates that it is not straight tube but it is a shape okay coming to the subdivisions uh, partly it is cartilaginous as well as partly it is uh, bony. So the lateral part, lateral one third, that is the pass externa, will be cartilaginous uh, in continuation with the ex, uh, the pinna uh, and the um, uh, medial two thirds. Okay, that is the pass intermedia as well as the pass interna will be uh, uh, bony. Okay. And the pony part is comparatively narrower compared to the, the cartilaginous part. This is important because if there are any foreign bodies, it will be stuck in between the, the cartilaginous as well as the pony part if they are quite large of that size. So this is again uh, to show the external caustic meatus beginning from the, the concha, the base of the con concha is here and up to the tympanic membrane. Okay, so this is the whole external acoustic meatus and it is bony part, this is the bony part where we have uh, the cartilaginous part which is the lateral one third and the medial two thirds will be the bony part. Okay. <coughs> the canal uh, of this or uh, the opening or uh, the tube itself is not round but it is oval in section and there are constrictions because of the, as I said, uh, the bony and the uh, um, the cartilage part. So there are two constrictions. One constriction at the junction of the bony and the cartilage part. That is the lateral one third and medial two thirds, where the uh, cartilage part end and the bony part begins. So there there is a constriction. And the second constriction is uh, said to be the most narrow part that is called as the isthmus. Wherever there is narrowing, then there is that part is called as isthmus. So here in the uh, external acoustic meatus also there is an isthmus. Uh, it is almost 2 centimeters, uh, centimeters deep to the concha. The total length as I said is 2.4 centimeters. Uh, so uh, uh, this uh, isthmus almost uh, of a distance of 2 centimeters from the concha. Okay. 
uh, the lining of this hole of this uh, uh, extracoracetic meatus uh, will be by the skin uh, that is uh, uh, just the normal skin uh, just like that of the which is covering the ear but uh, the uh, it is totally adherent to the bones and the cartilage as you know it is made up of cartilage or the bone okay lateral one third is cartilage inner uh, two thirds will be bony and the skin is totally directly adherent to this uh, bone or the cartilage part this is important because uh, whenever there are any infections okay uh, even slight infection will lead to uh, accumulation if there is any pus or uh, swelling or the inflammation then it leads to severe pain okay even slight infection because the skin is totally adherent and to the bone or the cartilage and there is no space for for the accumulation of pus or for the even the accumulation of the uh, the uh, the uh, the fluid because of the inflammation so this leads to severe pain hence it is very painful and they are modified coiled sweat glands uh, within the this cartilage part and these are uh, said to be ceremonious glands and they secrete ear wax or the sermon okay these are the foreign bodies okay so this wax will be automatically removed coming to the blood supply the blood supply of the outer part is supplied by the superficial temporal artery as well as the posterior auricular artery which are supplying the the pinna itself so these are uh, uh, as well as the inner part by the maxillary artery so the external part will be supplying uh, supplied by the same artery which are supplying the the pinna that is the superficial temporal arteries as well as the posterior auricular artery and the inner part will be supplied by the the maxillary artery coming to the lymphatic drainage uh, it will be to the pre and post auricular as well as the cervical group of lymph nodes okay just like that of the the uh, the pinna uh, the extra acoustic meatus develops as a funnel shaped ectodermal invagination from the dorsal part of the first brachial cleft so this is the the otic placard and from there will be a development of the 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 pinna itself as well as uh, the uh, the external acoustic meatus coming to the applied aspects as i said before because the skin is totally adherent to the 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 pinna as well as to the extra acoustic meatus any inflammation or any infection of the external meatus as well as the even the pinna causes uh, uh, the swelling will be very small because there is no space at all so the swelling will be small but the the pain uh, developed from these uh, infections and inflammation will be severe and i said uh, the reason the second thing important uh, applied aspects uh, of this uh, the pinna uh, as well as the the extra acoustic meatus is the toothache uh, especially if there is toothache from the lower jaw as well as the cancer of the tongue it will be
ear as well as even the the pain developed from because of the cancer of the tongue okay the third important uh, applied aspect is the ear wax okay uh, this ear wax usually collects and it comes out uh, comes out automatically itself you don't have to remove it uh, but sometimes it get accumulated and accumulated and it uh, doesn't come out at that time uh, the doctor will uh, try to flush it out okay during flushing uh, uh, flushing out of this uh, uh, ear wax sometimes it can uh, reflexively produce persistent cough or vomiting the presence of ear wax itself can uh, produce cough as well as vomiting so in case of especially in case of children if there is persistent cough and vomiting the doctor will examine his ear okay uh, to check whether there is accumulation of wax and as i said this can be easily removed if it is